Hey. So, I don't tend to think in the same ways that other people do. And, you know, I have problems expressing myself in ways because I think it's sort of these abstract things and references that people don't get. And a lot of the reason why I'm making these videos is to give you some of the references that I use. So one of the references is If I Ran the Zoo, which is from a Dr. Seuss book. Dr. Seuss was an author. He wrote children's books. He wrote other things. And a bunch of the children's books are things that you would recognize. The Cat in the Hat, The Lorax, The Grinch Who Stole Christmas. One of his books was If I Ran the Zoo, where it's a kid who has thoughts. And he's like, oh, if I ran the zoo, I'd get rid of these boring lions and tigers and zebras. And I'd bring in something really wild. And these are animals that don't exist from places that don't exist with like seven horns and 20 heads and just like seven tails that flash. And he's like, I'll do this and I'll do that and I'll do the other thing. And this is what I would do if I ran the zoo. So, you know, there are times where it's like I'm asked my opinion of, well, what do you think of whatever? Oh, well, if I ran the zoo, you know, saying that, you know, this is an idea that it's probably great, but at the same time, probably impractical. Um, another one of his books that, you know, falls into reference for me is, um, and to think that I saw it on Mulberry Street, which is really kind of boring because the kid goes to school every day and comes back home and his dad says, what did you see today? You're welcome says, oh, just a plain horse and wagon on Mulberry Street. And the dad's like, you got to pay attention. There's so much more out there. Now, this was back at a time where horses and wagons were kind of normal because, you know, not everybody had cars and cars were expensive and horses were relatively cheap. As opposed to now where it's the other way around where horses are insanely expensive and cars are relatively cheap. But the kid just said, mm, plain horse and wagon on Mulberry Street. And then he goes into these flights of fancy of... Once again, parades and animals and things that don't exist. And to think I saw it on Mulberry Street. Where it's like you have something wildly out of context in a very normal place. But uh, then the kid ends up just telling his dad the truth that all he saw was a horse and wagon on Mulberry Street. Uh, I noticed that I was telling you, when I was telling you about this... Um, that both of those stories are very much Walter Mitty. Now, there was a book and a movie, a couple of movies actually, The Secret Life of Walter Mitty, where Walter is just this boring guy who leads a boring life. But as he's sitting there leading his boring life, sitting in his little office, he has these wild fantasies of being a hero, of rescuing the lady, of doing great feats and he lives his entire life as this this sort of dream state um snoopy was described as a walter mitty character because i mean here you have snoopy who dreams about fighting the red baron back in world war one world war one is over a hundred years ago now when people are like ah snoopy and the red baron That's... even when Snoopy first came out in the 50s, World War One was 30, 40 years in the past. So, I noticed that I tend to connect with that. But, uh, as I said, there are a couple of phrases that like that that just kind of stick with me. And some of them are like punchlines of jokes. Um, another thing that sticks with me is there was a great TV series called Mythbusters. And Mythbusters, they take urban legends and they try and debunk them. And it's like, oh, if you throw a turtle up against the ceiling, it sticks. And so they take a turtle and throw it up against the ceiling and it doesn't stick. And it's like, no, that doesn't work. Usually it was other things and stupid things and lots and lots of explosions. And things always went wrong. Because when you try and replicate things that are at the hairy edge of believable um 
you're bound to make things go wrong. So, like, one time they took a car and turned it into a giant speaker to see if they could literally blow out the windows with the speaker. So the entire car was a speaker. The only purpose the engine ter served was to pump the speaker up and down. So it was almost to the point where the car was bouncing on its shocks because of the force of the speaker going like up this, up and down, but they couldn't break the windows. Uh, so, you know, that's the type of thing. But one of the hosts, Adam Savage, Adam Savage had a uh, catchphrase that he used quite often. It's like, oh, there's the problem. Where, you know, it's like, that's obviously what the problem is, you know. Oh, there's the problem. That's the thing that's on fire or the thing that's exploded or the thing that's been cut in half. It's like, oh, there's the problem. Which is like a, you know, it's it's a statement of the obvious, but it's intended to sound like it was the surprise that the thing on fire is the problem. Though sometimes the thing on fire was the intent. That being Mythbusters. Um, anyway, have a great day, Ron. <laughs>